You're listening to The Blueprint, brought to you by Executive Platforms. In every episode, we will discuss the topics and trends, the issues and ideas, the challenges and opportunities facing senior business leaders today. This series is one more way we want to engage with our network of industry executives. Thanks for joining us. Hello again, everyone. You're listening to another episode of Executive Platform's Blueprint podcast series. My name is Jeff Mix. I'm Executive Platform's Head of Content and Research. My guest today is Leo Howell of Georgia Tech. Leo has over two decades of experience working as an IT leader. He currently serves as the Interim Vice President for IT and Chief Information Officer at Georgia Tech. In this role, he provides vision, leadership, and oversight in the development and implementation of the university's information technology and IT resources. Before this role, Leo served as Georgia Tech's Chief Information Security Officer, which is a position he also held for the University of Oregon. Leo holds a bachelor's degree in computer science and electronics from the University of the West Indies and an MBA from North Carolina State University. As a certified information systems security professional and certified information systems auditor, Leo has a deep knowledge and commitment to cybersecurity. Leo's distinguished career is marked by strong collaborative leadership and the recognition of data as a strategic asset for decision-making in the ever-evolving information technology and cybersecurity landscape. Leo, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> I think I'm right in saying you have spent most of your career working on cybersecurity and information security in one way or another. What attracted you to this area? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good question. You're, you're dating me here, right? So this journey started for me over 20 years, 20 years ago. And I was a network engineer. And, and we just started seeing the, the beginnings of, of our cybersecurity challenges with people's websites being the face and viruses started coming out in the, in the late 90s. And that was actually, um, you know, my, my excitement about IT was dampered for a little bit there. As I'm, I'm seeing the evil that was about to come, right? But then it was actually a, a, a aha moment for me that, you know what? It's time to focus on uh, what to do about these things and how bad it can look in the future. And so, I mean, 20 years ago, I just switched my career to start focusing on, on, um, on IT security, information security, um, later on become cybersecurity. Um, but that's how it all began. And I think it kind of helped that I was always forward thinking I'm always looking at what's going to be five years from now. So every time I see the next malware or the next antivirus or the next anything, I'm looking at that, but I'm also thinking, what is this thing going to morph to become? What's going to be the, the new motive? And I'm happy I, I made that decision because I haven't looked back since then. <laughs> when you think back to where you first started working in the space and compare that to the sort of issues and challenges you deal with today, what surprises or impresses you the most? That, that's an interesting thing. I think I think the first thing I notice is that a lot has changed, right? A lot has changed in terms of the methods and how um, the attackers approach um, cybersecurity and or approach the threats that we face. But if you think about it, the motives kind of remain um, the same, right? A lot of the motives are still around financial um, gains. Um, and even when it's disruption, like as we're seeing with ransomware and those kinds of things today, it's still towards some kind of financial, financial end. But over recent time, we're starting to see this is not just about money anymore, right? This is about um, elections, politics, right? It's about disruption of our, um, our critical infrastructure. It's about the, the battlefield, right? So you, you can no longer think about war and battles without worrying about the cyber components. Or if you're a business that does any form of work with the military, with the government, you have to be thinking, are we at risk when there's a, a war going on um, with some of these things coming our, our way? So the, the motives have, have changed over, over the years because um, there are more bad guys out there using cybersecurity tactics to, to attack us. Um, but the basics remain the same. It's still um, social engineering type of um, attacks it's still mal malware that we've seen in the early days. It's just different types of malware, right? It's about ransomware to monetize access to our systems. The thing that worries me the most of anything else is that we're now starting to see cybersecurity challenges creep into safety, right? Safety of, um, of people. So you look at an hospital, you look at um, what's going on with change healthcare right now and, and the, the disruption that can be caused by these cyber challenges will start affecting people 
individual in terms of safety. And so now everybody kind of recognizes how, how serious this thing is, and we have to sort of treat uh, cybersecurity challenges as um, as extremely important for individuals as well as um, organizations. I know you're going to host a themed lunch discussion at the North American Information Security Summit in Denver this June. What topic do you want to talk about with a group of other cybersecurity professionals, and why have you chosen that issue? Yeah, it's, well, first of all, I'm looking forward to the, to the, the, the summit. Um, it promises to be, be a blast, so I'm looking forward to be there. Um, now, the, the topic I'm, I'm thinking about is something around the nexus with, um, of cybersecurity, robotic process automation, and artificial intelligence. Right. So right now, there's a, a massive push by organizations to to implement automation, right, in, in terms of building bots to do um, tasks that can that are repeatable, which is a, a massive efficiency gain, right? Because imagine you don't have to put a, a human um, on these things. You can have bots do this work and, and use the human brain to do more complicated things. Um, in terms of AI, especially generative AI, um, it's just a game changer um, for organizations. The problem we face is that if you had bad processes, bad data, um, and then you started you start to automate these things or start to leverage AI technologies, you're just accelerating bad, right? So people are going to feel the pain, the pain faster. So one of the things I think we can discuss is just looking at how cybersecurity should be leveraged as, as an avenue to accelerate adoption of these new technologies. In other words, if my Microsoft environment was, was safe, my Office 365 environment is, is configured properly, it shouldn't be a big deal for me to start turning on Copilot and those kinds of things because the environment was always secure. If it was not, and I turn on Copilot, I'm going to be causing all kinds of security exposures. Um, so it, it makes sense for us to fast track our cybersecurity to be able to leverage some of these, these kinds of technologies. The second um, component to this for me is how do we leverage AI and, and, and robotic process automation in the security space itself, right? So how do we leverage AI to summarize um, massive amounts of logs that we're collecting in our systems, um, interpreting policies, right? Reviewing standards. How do I use these things to summarize the bullets for me about what I need to know about a new law that's coming up um, or a new policy and gain back some time in my day but the, the crux of the matter is going to be, can I then start peering AI with automation and really um, accelerate our ability to automatically respond to incidents? Right? So there's, there's just a, a lot of good um, developments in these areas. And I'd love for us to sit here have a discussion about those um, things, but also share our stories. Just talk about how individual um, individual's AI journey is going? Um, is security being used as, a, as an accelerant or is it an impediment, right, to, um, to what folks are looking to do? And just see what, what comes out of those um, discussions. Absolutely. So for listeners who may not know, the format of a themed lunch discussion is that executive platforms tells everyone attending the summit which topics are available and people who are interested in your topic can opt in on a first come first serve basis until your lunch table is full. Uh, many delegates say these small group discussions are among their favorite features of our programs because you really get a chance to speak to like-minded people about what they really want to talk about and, as you say, share some more stories. Um, we will not know who signs up for your lunch for quite a while yet, but who are you hoping might join you? Uh, executives from big organizations, small organizations, any particular industries or areas of expertise? It, I think um, all are welcome, right? Um, because I think in these discussions, what you're going to see is that big organization, small organization, some of the challenges are the same. Um, and I, th I feel like when you have a, a broad cross section of people at a table like this from different industrial verticals, different um, organizational sizes, you have a more enriched discussion uh, because you're going to see some of the creativity that comes out of some of these smaller organizations that may not have a big budget, right, to, to, to do some things. Um, so I think all are welcome and you, you just have a better experience when you can hear from, from different um, sides. I appreciate we're talking about a conversation that is still a few months away, but are there things you know you plan to share with the group or maybe hope someone in the group might be able to share with you? 
Yeah, I, I, I'm prepared to share um, my AI journey um, at, at Georgia Tech, just what have we been doing um, over the past, um, it's going to be the past several months, right, by the time we get to the, the conference. Um, and just sort of talk strategy. What have we been doing? What is the long-term strategy? Um, how is that going to be affecting um, my population, which is student, faculty, and, um, and administration, right? Um, and I'm hoping other people do the same. Just come prepared to share what you're doing. And um, hopefully we all leave with um, feeling smarter and feeling uh, more equipped and ready to take on the, the challenge. I've had a lot of conversations over the last year about AI. Uh, I'm really looking forward to having some more with some cyber security and uh, information technology professionals like yourself. Where do you think people are in their journey? Because of course, you, you've you been working in this space a little longer than some of the others, just the nature of your work. You would have been facing early adopters who are trying to uh, p potentially be a threat to your organization, and you're also trying to be proactive about those threats. Do you think cybersecurity professionals maybe have more to say or have put more thought into their strategy than some of the other sectors at this point? So it, it's, it's hard to say, um, generally speaking. I feel like um, the cybersecurity vendors um, that we partner with um, they are ahead of the game. They are in, in introducing different AI capabilities into their tools and their, their offerings. But um, from a policy standpoint, um, cybersecurity staff feel like are fighting with one hand behind our backs, right? Because as you know, the, the legal um, legal system is not going to stay um, stay up to date with this stuff. Um, it's going to take a while before the regulation set in and before... Um, people understand what the guardrails um, are or should be. And so that means in organizations, you, you're not going to have a lot of policies that are nuanced enough right now. You're going to see policies that says, stay away from it. Or you're going to see policies that say, hey, let's go full in, right? Let's go uh, adopting these, these technologies. But you're not going to find a real nuanced approach of where can we use AI technologies and where we shouldn't because it's too early. People just don't understand it yet, right? And then um, cybersecurity folks are, are also challenged just like any other user because you have to work within a policy framework and you can't just bring in some new tool into your environment without it being vetted first by, by the lawyers and by the um, some other folks, right? Where on the other side, the bad guys don't have any rules. They don't have to follow rules. They don't have policies. Legislation um, don't really matter to them. So... Um, it, it feels like in this this leg of the journey, right, we're going to get a lot of black eyes um, as cybersecurity professionals because we are fighting from a place of disadvantage. Um, but I really do believe if we start working together as a community, and this, this roundtable is one of those, those examples, right, get like-minded people together to start connecting and building our own um, collaborative approach to solving some of these challenges, Eventually, we'll, we'll catch up and we'll, we'll start winning. But in this early stages, we're going we're gonna to take some, some, um, some lumps from the sure. from the and the stuff. For sure. Uh, and that's such an interesting point to make that you are coming at this from a position of disadvantage because you're sort of waiting for a framework and, and what works to be established and then standardized. And as you say, some of the bad actors in the space, they can try anything. So it's, it's an yeah. interesting, yeah. Um, I know, Leo, we've covered a lot in this conversation. If there were one or two key takeaways you want people to think about further, what would you want to highlight for them? Yeah, I think, so personally, I, I, I believe um, that the genie is out of the bottle with this thing, right, with AI, that there are just powerful capabilities out there today. Um, I'm personally using some of these AI technologies, and it's just been a game changer, game changer for me. So I, I really do believe that we should lean in. We should embrace um, these technologies. We should spend more time understanding our businesses and see how we can introduce some of these, these technologies. Uh, from a cybersecurity standpoint, we've got we to gotta get out of being impediments. We can't be seen as a part of friction. Cybersecurity has to somehow be seen as, a, as something to leverage, right? To accelerate um, AI adoption across um, organizations. So if nothing else, I think people should walk away feeling empowered to go try some stuff, um, but quickly look for what needs to change on a cybersecurity um, standpoint. Do we need to go classify data so we can easily communicate to people what can and cannot be put into a AI chatbot, for example, and then just get security not to be seen as an impediment? This is our opportunity um, to present security as, as a strategic asset for an organization to leverage 
and we can start saying things like, because we invested this money in doing cybersecurity, now you're free to do this AI yeah, stuff. Well, I think that's a great place to wrap things up for today. And for those of you who will be joining us at the North American Information Security Summit in Denver, Leo's lunch discussion will be on June 17th. Uh, you sign up through the event app and seating is limited. So if you have enjoyed this conversation, be sure to sign up. Leo, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure, Jeff. Take care. <laughs> You've been listening to another episode of Executive Platform's Blueprint podcast series. I've been Jeff Mix. Let's do it again soon. Thank you.